Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to this month's edition of Center Row Business Today. Uh, today, I am at uh, a wonderful institution here in the city of Centerville, uh, Dayton International School, uh, and I am here with uh, two of the folks who are very uh, instrumental uh, in what goes on here, uh, Nick Castro and uh, Suzanne Jacobson. So very nice to meet you both this morning. Good to see you, Mr. Mayor. Well, let's talk a little bit about uh, Dayton International School. I imagine there's a lot of folks in the community that uh, don't really know what you do here. So why don't, why don't you just take us through that? Dayton International School is a Spanish immersion school for children between, we started two, one and a half years through about nine or ten years old. And um, what that means is that we have programs that um, teach the entire curriculum that you would find in a kindergarten, in a preschool, but in Spanish. It's a pretty amazing uh, thing. I know I've been here for the ribbon cutting last September and then of course uh, today. And uh, it is incredible. I mean, English is, is basically not spoken. Uh, and the, That's right. the kids, uh, I can hear them conversing. It's pretty interesting, uh, interesting to, uh, to hear. Yeah, it's, it's known that uh, it's much easier for children to learn a foreign language than it is for adults. So when we looked at what the best way would be to provide children with this, with this foundation, the best way is immersion. So we have native speakers and everything they do with the children, they do in Spanish. They ask children to talk about their pictures, about the towers that they're building with the Legos. And um, through this interaction, the teachers provide them with new words and the children respond. And over time, just like any mother or father would speak with their own children, the children here learn to do it in Spanish. And it's a very natural process. It's not um, as hard as high school. It's, uh, it's very, very natural, and the children go at their own pace. They can talk as much or as little as they want. They learn by listening. They take it all in. Um, when you have a three-year-old at home, you know, sometimes they don't speak at all for a while, and then all of a sudden, here comes five sentences. Of course. And that's the exact same way it functions here. So it's, it's a very, very natural process. Well, it's amazing to watch the little kids. I mean, they, they're obviously very, very happy here, and they, you, you can tell that they're pleased with the environment, uh, and it's fun. Well, Nick, how did you get involved uh, in, in, uh, in the process and in the school here? Well, when we moved to Dayton, it was very important to me and my family to have our children in an immersion school. So three of my children are students here at the school. And um, what we love about the school is that it, it's, it's the Centerville curriculum, math, science, reading, everything, it's just done in Spanish. And there's also the component of culture. Um, a lot of folks think, well, you speak Spanish, it's all about Mexico. But that's not, that's not the case here. All of our teachers are, well, we have teachers from Mexico, we have teachers from other countries, Hispanic countries as well. So sharing that culture is something that's important to us as well with the kids. And they have, they talk about festivals and holidays and foods and things from, from many different Hispanic cultures. And it's, uh, it's important to us because, personally for me, but I think for the United States as well, Spanish is the second most spoken language in the world, just behind Mandarin. And the U.S. is currently the fifth large Spanish-speaking nation in the world. And in about 30 years, it's going to be the largest Spanish-speaking country in the world. So why not provide your family members, your, your sons and daughters, with this tool for their toolkit? And that was important to us, and that's how I got involved, bringing my students, my kids here, and, um, and was so, so happy about the program and how passionate the teachers were that it made me want to help out in some way. Well, what I've been so impressed with, because I, when I was here for the ribbon cutting uh, back in September, uh, there, there was such a focus on the cultural aspects of learning about uh, the cultures of some of the, uh, the Hispanic countries, and I thought that was really impressive, mm -hmm. because I think a lot of times uh, students don't really have a good sense of that, and they, uh, I just think it's important. I think it, it makes people better citizens of the world, if you will, and, and just just more in tune with the different cultures outside, uh, you know, what we've learned about the United States. Mm -hmm. I just think that's a real benefit uh, to kids. It broadens their horizons, uh, broad opens up their mind, and I, I think it's a, a huge benefit in addition just to knowing the language. That's absolutely right. And there, I mean, so many benefits knowing the language. I mean, if you stack up a resume maybe with someone who, who has um, some multilingual abilities, I mean, that's going to help so much 
when people are trying to apply to college and get jobs. I mean, there's so many benefits to, to having another language, and uh, we're, we're passionate about teaching that. In addition to the language, it, it's also about cultural competency. Different languages use different words to get the point, same point across. For instance, in English, you say, how are you? When, you? when you greet someone, you say, how are you? Sure. In Austria, where I come from, if I were to ask you, how are you? That would mean that I want to know exactly your physical condition, your home life, you know, how everything is. So we don't use, how are you? We, we say, good day. The equivalent of good day. Well, I feel bad all these years now I've been asking you how are you I, I, <laughs> and I didn't realize that. I was just trying to remember what I asked, said when I came in this morning but hopefully it wasn't <laughs> how are you. No, no, but no, <laughs> but this, that, is, that is the standard here. Sure. That is how people communicate. Sure. If you go to a country that, um, a Spanish-speaking country and, and there it's different in Spain. In Spain different things are expected than they are in Mexico and I bet you Argentina. It's just different, this competency. What types of things you say in which situations? Well, and I think it, it's, it's so funny to, to hear that because I think that's what leads to a lot of misunderstanding between yes. uh, different cultures and different people because no one wants to say something that's inappropriate but it, it, I would never have known that how are you is kind of, well, that's a different question. Exactly. Uh, I remember when I uh, worked in-house at NCR Corporation, I, I would get to Europe from time to time on business, and I was so aware of the different approaches uh, from our European colleagues who were also at NCR, and I frankly felt very ignorant because, I was, yeah, of course, I was trying not to say anything that would seem to be unusual but but I could tell sometimes that they would kind of smile and, and I thought oh gosh I probably said something that is a little <laughs> bit uh, iffy here but it, but I think there is such a, uh, a level of ignorance in a lot of people just because they've never been taught mm -hmm. and obviously you're not going to know that unless you've had someone take you through it so that's why I think what you're doing here is so important it, it gives it gives the students who, who have this knowledge such an advantage in later life. Yes, yeah, so when you're, a, when you're a mayor and you have your constituents that are maybe immigrants from, sure. a, Spanish, from a Spanish speaking country, you can relate to them on a whole different level. The same with you know, any other profession that these children will get into if right. they're doctors, lawyers, um, nurses, or, or anything really. Well, I, I think that's true. I mean, the, the, the world, of course, is becoming so much more interdependent. And, and you're right, we have a, a large number of uh, folks coming from Hispanic countries to live in the United States. And, and it's, 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 oh, well, certainly it's the obligation as a mayor it's an, a, and a, in a business setting is the same. You, you need to be able to communicate effectively uh, in order to really, you know, make things work the way they're supposed to. And that's, that's why this, I look at what you do is just building knowledge, building information, building cultural awareness, and that's what's so exciting about it. That's exactly right. That's what we're trying to do. It's our passion. It's, it was the vision when we started this, and we want to prepare students for this multicultural world, this multilingual world, this global. The world is becoming so much smaller. And, and from day one, that's what we've been trying to do here. Well, I, I think the people that, would, that would, would have that knowledge, again, they have such an advantage. Uh, because it, it's just, it, give, it gives you the ability to compete on a whole different level, uh, both in terms of business or whatever you're really doing, and that, that's what's so exciting about it. Well, so as I understand it then, that, so the, what you teach here is, is really the full curriculum, mm -hmm. uh, just as if they were in central, high, or central schools. That's example. correct. And so you've got math and history, the whole, the whole range, it's just it's all in Spanish. We do, and we, in fact we start at an earlier age. We have um, what are called mommy and me classes. And those are for students one and a half to two and a half years old. And they come in with a caregiver and do some interactive rhymes and songs. And um, we can present them the language and the culture at that early age. Um, our next program up is the, um, the Little Explorers. So it's not quite ready for preschool yet, maybe two and a half to three. And they are in here as well, kind of like I said, a, a precursor to, to preschool. And they get exposed to, to the same things that our, our preschoolers do, and they, they work with our teachers. And um, we also have our preschool, We're, and our preschool and our um, kindergarten and first grade, like I said, our full, full Centerville curriculum. So everything that they would learn in Centerville schools, they learn here just, just in Spanish. So, so you've actually got some even preschool activities yes. for the smallest. That's children. correct. Yep, starting at one and a half. Oh, that's fantastic. And on Saturdays we have a class for our older children. So from 
first grade on until about eight years old, I think we have. So um, they can come and they're here for three hours on Saturday and they get to inter interact with their peers and, and speak Spanish and have some fun and, and learn a lot of things. And we also, we also offer adult classes too. Um, oh, talk, let, tell me a little about yeah, that. Yeah, well, we, we have, right now we have beginning and intermediate Spanish for adults. Uh, it's an eight-week course. They meet once a week. And we're always open to adding new courses. For example, there's uh, folks need to learn uh, healthcare Spanish or business Spanish, different, different, uh, different areas of the language. And we're, we're willing and able to teach those as well. So. Oh, no, that's interesting. Now, I would think that would also be a very beneficial course for a lot of people uh, who are you know dealing with folks for uh, for, uh, for whom Spanish might be a first language sure. and it would allow allow them to interact and communicate a lot more effectively yeah so we have we have a variety of courses for for different age groups so we're we have a lot to offer here and we know that based on the our previous students because some have graduated past kindergarten and first grade and they had a wonderful transition to Centerville School. Oh, I see. So, so they were here for some for preschool, kindergarten, and first grade, went to second grade at Centerville, and had a perfect transition. That's fantastic. Well, so once someone, once a child gets through the first grade, the idea would be they would then transition to the Centerville uh, schools? That's exactly right. I see. I see. But now, but you, you do have courses are for uh, older, uh, older kids as well, right? We do. Our Saturday courses are for those who maybe, for example, we'll have uh, a student who's in second grade now at Centerville. Okay. And they still want to have access to the Spanish and, you know, you don't want to lose it. So they, they can come on Saturdays and interact with, with other graduates of the program or with, uh, with, even if they're not part of the program previously, they're more than welcome. And, and they can come here and, and do the same activities they did when, uh, when they were here or, or have, like I said, access to, to all this wonderful culture and knowledge here. Well, that's what's, that is so cool because, again, you think of little kids, a second grader who has this kind of a background mm -hmm. and, and just the, the extra uh, abilities they're going to have uh, really through the rest of their life because mm -hmm. my understanding is that when, when you learn a language that early, it, it really does stick in your mind. I mean, it's, we, you know, I know, of course, my kids are older now, but we have a new, new uh, a grandbaby. And I just, at that age, the kids are, their minds are just like sponges. They, you know, they pick up things and I, I think they pick the language up probably pretty, uh, uh, pretty uh, easy and early as well. Well, there's a time for language learning, if you will, when children are that young. An optimal time, yes. right. And um, when you learn it there, then it stays with you. There are some benefits as well, not just the language, but multilingual children are also, it's, it's been proven that they have higher cognitive abilities, um, abilities to reason better, logic, problem solving skills that, that maybe multilingual children don't have. So it's not just the language and the culture, but you're, you're preparing them with these, you're, you're giving them these tools that they can use across other fields as well. Problem solving and... I, I, wish, I wish we had more time. This is, this is delightful and this is, a, this is a wonderful program. So I want to congratulate you on that. I'm so glad you're here in Centerville. Uh, this, is, this is really fantastic work you're doing. We're very excited to be here. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, that'll do it for this month's edition of Centerville Business Today. Uh, we're here at the Dayton International School, and I'd certainly urge you to take a hard look at this if you've got uh, children that uh, you'd like to have a broader, uh, a broader base as they go on in life. This is a great, uh, great program to check out. Thanks very much. We'll see you next month.